Across Ghana's coastline in the Greater Accra region, Volta region, the central and western regions, you would find fortified trading posts constructed between 1482 and 1786. The forts and castles built purposely for trade in gold later changed and played a significant role in the slave trade. According to UNESCO, there were links in the trading routes established by the Portuguese in many areas of the world during their era of great maritime exploration. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Joy Prime Explore. Today we are coming to you from the central region, specifically Senyabriku, and we are here to explore and fort Good Hope. Fort Good Hope was established in 1715, constructed in 1715 by the Dutch, and it is um, the last fort that was um, constructed along Ghana's coast in the then um, Gold Coast. It was enlisted um, as a United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization UNESCO um, Heritage Site. Now, from Accra to this place is just about 1 hour 30 minutes um, without traffic. It could even be less. But not many people know that this fort exists here in Senyabriku. Let's go inside. Nice Hello. to meet you. You are welcome. Thanks so much. Hope everything is well. Everything is well. Everything is fine to you. How may I help you? Ah, we're here to check out Fort Good Hope. Yeah. Yes. You are welcome. And we know there are a lot of good things here you're going to show us around, right? Yes, of course. Great. I love it already. The breeze. Because the ocean is just some meters away from this it's place. It's true. So where do we start from? We're going to go which way? We are going to start from where they kept the men sleeves. Okay. And at first, hmm. This place, they built this place for gold trade, not for slaves. Okay. So during the golden trade, the building was a very small place, triangle. Okay. Where they started with gold. Mm. But later on, when they see that those who came first, or those previous ones normally benefit from slaves, mm. they too to change to slaves. Mm. So when that, there's... Is that a Dutch? Because the Dutch constructed in 1715, right? Dutch is the one who ran this place. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But when they start uh, bringing the slaves in here, Mm. They see that the number they are getting becoming many, and the mm. place is too small for them. So they had to expand it to make it a little bigger. Wow. So when they, space, when they bring the men inside here, mm. they see that they normally struggle with the white to escape. And to try to keep them is becoming difficult. Okay. So where they used to keep their gold, mm. the, where they kept the gold, there was no ventilation. Mm. But to put a human being there is too difficult for them. So they make a hole so that they can get some fresh air from. Okay. But still, it's so terrible to keep a human being over there. Wow. So let's now start from okay. that place okay. where they can be mentally. Okay, sure. Let's, let's, let's do that. Why you used to keep the men's lips? Okay. And this is the, this is the only ventilation where they, they can get some fresh air from. Wow. When they want to feed them some to sunlight, yeah. Yes, when they want to feed them to the pass through the foot through here, wow. they use a bucket with a rope, yeah. So they lower it for them to have their food. And I was told they kept about 100 people here 100 in this small space, yes, because they are looking for survivors. Not the, many, not many have heard of for good hope, right? Yes, people, a lot of it seems like that most of the Ghanaians does not know. There's a fort closer to Accra. Accra. True. But most of the tourists, they have a tour guard. Oh. The guy they used to, to come around. Okay. There's a grave here. There are four. Four graves? Four graves. Some of the white men, those who died, they buried them here. 
Oh, really? But the name of the particular person who is buried inside here, I'm not, I don't know the particular name. Okay. Who is the one buried here? It's, it's not like Cape Coast and Lumina, that's yeah. the name of the people are written on yeah. it. So that's someone is buried, was yeah. buried here. Yeah, and then another one buried here. Yeah. Another one buried here. Yes. And another one buried here. Yes. Do, do we have an idea who they were? No. Okay. What is this? This is a well. Oh, where they used to store their water. This is so deep. Very deep. The water here is not from the ground. It's a rainwater. Okay. When it's rain, the quality is from the rooftop. You can see these blocks. Uh huh. So there's a hole around the hole. The water they used to come. The water will come here for them to use. Wow. And as far they use this as a pump, when they roll it, it the water will come out from them to use. Interesting. Because they have abandoned the place, we use the tops as a room for a guest who okay. can lodge over here. Okay. So we pipe this machine to pop the water to the tank so that they can have access of water to use. Okay. So you roll this, you turn it this way. Yes. And then the water? The water will flow. So we pass through here. Oh. But When they are sending the slaves away, they use this place to, for registering. They okay. register each member name. And at first, this, way, this place was used as a bathroom. Okay. But now we create it as a toilet. Slaves doesn't bath, but the last day they let them go in one by one to bath. Mm. After bathing, they tie their faces. They use something to tie the person face. Mm. Because they will not let you know where they are taking you to. So at, after tying the person face, they will be in queue with a chain. Mm. They direct them through here. So they will be walking step by step because their place, their, their way here is very narrow. Mm. So when they are walking step by step, before they reach, they will reach the shop they see. There are guys over there who lead them to the boats, taking them to the ship, then they lead them to Elimina Castle. Mm. Because the Elimina Castle is the bigger place where they send all of them over there before taking them away. So they will reach the Elimina Castle before they unveil their Thing from their eyes mm, before so they remove the blindfold when they buy for you when they remove it you don't know the exit i pass through your pass through here mm. that's the reason why they have to blindfold them so that the moment they read them you know that you are in different place altogether so where are we going now i just want to show you the hole where they pass them to okay now so this is the door of no return no return okay here at Fort good home the hole was here when they pass the slave tree through, they make the door through here. Okay. But when they stop the slave tree, we sell it. Okay. We are not, they, they sell it before I came here. Okay. When they pass them through. Mm. And you have some tiny bats over to here. Okay. Some time ago, I was trying to destroy them, but the government came in that. We don't know the reason why they are here, so we should leave them. The bats? Yes. So they, they, these bats have been here for how long? I came and made them over here. Wow, and they're still here? They're still here, over 20 years ago. Over 20 years? And yeah, they're still here? Still here. You can see them still flying around. Wow. So do, you, do you think there's any superstition? Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Is it not strange? Very strange. I don't know the reason why. Of all the villages, the place they know, I don't know whether the place is very cool for them, that's why. Mm. I prefer to be here. Mm. Well, over 20 years, these bars have been here. Okay. And we were told not to do anything, do to, anything them. To, them. Not to destroy them. Wow. So it becomes part of the tourist. Yeah, true. Most of that, when you bring some people in, the moment they enter here, mm. they become afraid mm. because of the bats. Wow. And they make the place to become too small too. Mm. But, but the door of no return used to be here. Used to be here. But it, it has been sealed now. Yeah. I was told the fishermen normally used to enter the pass through the road to enter okay. the fort. Okay. That is why we still so that nobody can pass through the back. They have access to the place. Okay. Okay. Great. So are we moving to the top? Yes. Okay. 
This place is their common hall where they do normally have a meeting. Mm. And that room at first is the captain's room, the one in charge of the whole place. Okay. So the big man had access to this place? Yes. And he had a balcony here? This is the balcony. And they had a balcony directly facing the ocean with a lot of fresh air. So these are cannons, right? Yes, yeah, this is the cannon. Okay. Strategically positioned to fire at the enemy. Yes. This cannon, you can see that we put some of them down with, over there. Yeah. That is not the original place. Okay. At first, they put them all around the building. Okay. Because they are afraid that somebody is coming to attack them. Yeah. So they put everything in order. So when, when the enemy is approaching, the approaching, they put the cannonballs inside. And sometimes to they come if you come a critical, you want to sit down to stand here to shoot. Yeah. Somebody underground down there also can see you to shoot you back. Mm. So they make this place as a critical. They use this one to spy. Mm. Because they can see somebody down there, but you the person down there, it will be difficult for the person oh, okay. to see them. Yeah. So they use this one to spy yeah. before any attack. Yeah. Thank you, Sebastian. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. So we're still here in Senya Breku community in the um, central region. I've met one of the residents here, right? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> What's the name? Sami Bekwin. Sami Bekwin. Sure. Okay. You sure. live here? Yeah. Okay, great. Can you tell us a bit about um, Senya Breku? Uh, Senya Breku. Oh, I, see, I see a lot, a lot happening. Yeah, there's, there, there, there. Some banking, So, so right? yeah, there's a funeral, okay. like in most <laughs> places in there, there's a funeral yeah. every weekend. So they are preparing, getting their dishes of food ready okay. to serve visitors that will come to the funeral uh, okay. tomorrow and Sunday. So if you can see the women, every woman is busy doing one thing or the other okay. in preparation of the funeral yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. Oh, so okay. basically that is what they are doing. I see. Yeah. I, see. Yeah. I, I feel the communality and then the community spirit you know, yeah. here. Um, it's a closely knit society. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me, in terms of religion and other things, I know Christianity is the predominant yeah. you know, religion yeah. you know, um, here. Yeah. Uh, but also you have a lot of people also yeah. into ATR, African traditional religion. Yeah, so Christianity is the most predominant uh, religion in, we have in Senya Breku. But okay. apart from that, um, there are people who also practice the traditional religion. Okay. And it is interesting to know that even some of the people who are Christians still practice uh, one or two ways, the traditional uh, the mix stuff. So yeah, like they a it's a mix. Uh -huh. And we also have the Muslims. Let's talk about African traditional religion and the traditional religion itself. Um, there's some, there's some level of superstition, you know. Sure. Uh, I hear previously there was there was a pond here. Yeah. When you cut yeah. fish from that pond, mm -hmm. you ate the fish right there. You yeah. don't take the fish away. Sure. How sure. true is that? Yeah, it's true. So uh, in the olden days, so that was what we grew to meat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the before I go to or narrate uh, how true is it or not. The essence of doing that is not us to check greediness. Ah. Not to collect the fish or one man collect the fish, takes yeah. it home and yeah. then he uh, or she alone yeah. uh, eats everything. Yeah. But it's to take what you can eat, leave mm. the rest there so that yeah. the next person who is also yeah. hungry can go yeah. there, take the fish See, and that, eat. That, that's that the makes, essence. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. A lot of taboos in the olden days were rooted in scientific knowledge. Yeah. A lot of them, so for instance, I'm told that um, we are not allowed to sink when bathing in the yeah, olden days. Yeah, it was yeah. a taboo to do that. Yeah. And it was rooted in science also because in the olden days, the chemicals that they used in the production of the soup was quite poisonous. Yeah. So let's say if you're taking a shower mm -hmm. and you're singing, yeah. it enters it's your mouth, it can cause bad. damage to yeah. your system and yeah. all of that. Yeah. So that was why, you know, you're not supposed to sing. But yeah. because it was a taboo, people heeded strictly to it for the fear yeah. that mm -hmm. maybe um, they may incur the wrath of, of you know, ghost. of the gods or yeah. something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think it makes sense. It makes sense. That's basically. And it makes sense. In fact, not too far away from us is another uh, area okay. where there are lots of coconuts. 
uh -huh. you can pluck as many coconuts you want, yeah. but you have to drink or eat everything there. <laughs> it is wow. against the taboo to bring the coconuts home. So that spot is still there? It's still there. It's still there. Really? Yes. Yeah, uh, just after the fourth, there's another uh, beach where we have those coconuts there. We okay. can go there now, pluck as many as we want, mm -hmm. but if you plug it, we don't bring it home. Mm. We take everything there. You drink everything there and yeah. you come home. So people people adhere strictly to Yeah, there. strictly today, even as of today. Oh. Yeah, it is as old as a community wow. itself. But still people ha, has adhere anyone to that. Tried uh, yeah. Taking the coconut home to see what will happen. You know in Ghana and <laughs> in Sanya Breko as a community, we yeah. uphold the uh, traditional, traditional rules and values and norms okay. very strictly mm. so I don't think there is anyone even though I cannot speak mm. about it as a fact or evidence but yeah. there is nobody who has made that attempt ah, yeah. you don't want to try you don't want to incur the wrath no the no, wrath no, of no, the no, no no and nobody wants about, to do that talk about African traditional religion mm. I think that's a shrine right yeah that is one of the shrines yeah on your right is one of the shrines yeah okay. on your right hand and this place uh, we celebrate our festival every August. Every August. August, yeah, okay. the 23rd or uh, somewhere. The third Friday in August is the date for the celebration of our local festival. Okay. And this is supposed to be our dead background. And oh, okay. So, so this is a dead background. Yeah, this is a dead background. So you can see a small platform over there. Okay. Yeah, That's sometime, the yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. So, so if I you come see. here in August, the place looks very busy, especially this place. Yeah. August, uh, Tuesday, uh, the fourth Tuesday in August, it's yeah. always busy here. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I mean, still on traditional values, I had someone saying that um, for some of the tribes here, if someone dies, what do they do? They take them to the ocean? Or what yes, we have different, different, different tribes here okay. in Sanya mm. uh, what we call Ebusian, mm. Ebusian. Okay. So, yeah. So, in one, one of those um, families or tribes, yeah. when one dies, the person is put in white calico or styled in white calico with some special leaves that looks like rope okay and then you put the person or you tie the person the calico put the person on a wood you go back into the sea swim with the person or bath the person in, in the sea and then from there we call something osamaba Okay. Or the people, the family people will be singing and crying and then they take the person to the cemetery for barrier. So okay. it's one of the practices of one of the uh, tribes in this uh, community. Thank you very much. Um, Welcome. My name again. Uh, I'm Bekwin. Sami Bekwin. Yeah. Bekwin. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. Bro. Thank you. Nice okay. to meet you. Too. Yeah. I'm now in the parliament of Ghana to meet the member of parliament for Ewutu Senior West, Gisela Tete. She says Fort Good Hope is not the only tourist attraction in her constituency. She says her constituency has a great potential for an eco-tourism park. She wants the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board to do more to preserve Fort Good Hope and make it serve as an attraction to people from the diaspora and other parts of the world. It was established as Fort Good Hope, mainly for the gold trade, and later on changed into slave trade. And it later on was used for the, by the, for the slave trade. Um, the town itself has a number of sh shrines. It has quite a strong he um, cultural heritage with the Asafo groups uh, that dominate the, the cultural space. Mm. And then, on the northern side of the constituency, we have some of the, we have ecotourism potentials, mm -hmm. actually documented by Forestry Commission. Okay. Yes. And they are part of the World Biodiversity Sites. Yeah. So the, there's also the ecotourism potential of the, of the mm -hmm. district. Yeah. Of the districts. And that's part under Winneba, because mm -hmm. the Forestry Commission, the Winneba office. Yeah. Um, again, it is the part also the, the closest tourism cluster outside of Accra. Mm -hmm. uh, my prayer is that the Forestry Commission would realize, would maximize that location mm -hmm. so that tourists may not have to come all the way to Cape Coast and beyond to realize, uh, to have a look at what the central region has to offer, mm -hmm. but may even have a glimpse of it before they get to the major sites mm -hmm. of Cape Coast and Elmina. And the Kakum Forest Reserve. Mm. In 
an area called Bewenum, Mampong Bewenum in the district, they actually have a Vista Reception Center, okay. which is not, which is though not really utilized the way in which it should be. Mm. And so uh, I have engaged the Forestry Commission on that mm. to be able to make it uh, more, more useful. So aside called Culture and Heritage Tourism in Senior Breku, mm. ecotourism in the Mampong Biwenum areas. Mm. And so those three elements, one in the north, one in the center, and the one in the south, mm. together with the beaches at Senior Breku, yeah. they have some very nice beaches at Senior Breku. All together, at least, they would uh, qualify as interesting potentials for the district. Mm. Um, officials of Ghana Tourism Authority, senior officials have been there. I've taken them around all these sites mm. to have an idea and they have made some comments on things that they think that we should look out for. And also, the Ministry of Tourism had a World Bank sponsored tourism master plan developed. Mm. And fortunately, we managed to get our tourism facilities also logged in there. Because ideally, you must have your tourism facilities logged in there to show that uh, your tourism sites are obviously worth something yeah. developing. So our hope is that for the ecotourism site, we'll be able to have it like a mini kakum, mini walkways within. There are some caves and there's a forest, the forest itself, and a combination of kakum and shy hills, whereby yeah. some people may be able to go for forest walks mm -hmm. or with quad bikes yeah. or go on the walkway itself. And we are really looking towards getting some investors to be able to support that way. Because and I think the unique selling proposition is that it is a closeness to Accra. So I think for the, the forts and castles in the central region generally, mm. I think they must be taken as a project and be, should be taken as a as a serious project. Mm. They are all under UNESCO, mm. uh, World Heritage Sites, but I don't see us reaping the real benefits of, of that uh, tag, if you let me put it that way. Mm. Now, if you also Look at the names of quite a number of them. Fort Good Hope. Good Hope is spelled G-O-E-D-E-H-O-P. It's, yeah. it's a Dutch name. Yeah. There's also Fort Amsterdam. And there are quite a few others along the coast. And they have a Dutch back, uh, Dutch names to them. You, and you know the history of the forts and castles that the Dutch were very instrumental. In fact, in 2022, December or so, the Dutch Prime Minister mm. issued an apology for their involvement in slavery mm. in the environment of the slave trade mm. and they indicated that they're going to set up a 200 million euro education fund mm. i actually went to visit the dutch ambassador here in accra mm. to see how i could have discussions with him with in respect to the fort good hope yeah. because naturally it's a relic and it's standing there mm. and how the community could also tap into the education fund unfortunately it was indicated that it was more for the colonies which would be the destinations oh. but my point was that there was an origin and there was a destination True. so uh, we thought we could tap into that but I, I believe discussions will not end yeah. and maybe if the government feels that they should have they should be able to make something out of that mm -hmm. they, sh they should go for it because it could be a bit more engagement at a much higher level more diplomatic level yeah. than at my as my level so I would say that the forts, if there was, if this fort were in a European country or yeah. another country, it would have been preserved mm -hmm. and I'd maybe had other things, other amenities like a museum, which we've been trying to see if we can set up on our own, but it's a bit difficult because this is under the management of Ghana Museums and Management and Monuments Board, yeah. thereby I would expect that they would assist. I've had meetings with the site engineer, site engineers, um, hoping that we could take it a step further because the Fort Good Hope is in reasonably good condition. Yeah. But it just needs some sprucing. Mm. Yes, so uh, it is my intention to keep on pushing mm. to make sure that Ghana Museum and Monuments Board would consider, you know, preserving it better. Mm. A slight renovation would do. There's a guest house, some, uh, it's, it's, some part is being used as a guest house. It's either upgraded properly or whatever you see. But I think that you should have a bit more multiple use, not just 